We wanted to hype up the crowd as much as possible. On that note, we're loading in. It's going to be Awoken map number one. It's going to be Kid Bellissimo in Venga versus Mr. Karate, the buttery biscuit base. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this. And of course, we're going to be on Venga off the star. He's going to try and get a little bit of intel quickly. Almost running into base a bit too early on. Uh, base has just secured himself two major items, but we've got the rails coming out. Three rails oh in a row. God. One more rail, not quite going to land it. And that rocket is going to sting a bit. It's the kind of shot where that rocket would never have happened if Vengo was able to hit the money shot at the last possible second, but a little bit of a, a minor punishment, I suppose. Both players able to kind of restack up nice and happily, kind of splitting the map in half, as it Ooh. were. That rail, though, very impactful. It is going to miss, though, Vengo going in with the last-minute double jump to try and elate the shot. But he's very weak. He's near heavy, but base. He's got blood in his eyes. He's like, the shot, but Ben Gurr turns it around again. Ben Gurr has this ridiculous way of just turning a fight that by all accounts should not be in his favor and just do what must be done. That made no sense at all. Hall got up the bounce pad, base was vastly outstacking him, and Venga just, again, turning it around. How much were we seeing that in just the small series we had between him and the CNZ yesterday? It's unbelievable how consistent he is at pulling this off. I really, really, really see shades of, like, 2017 claws with the way he aims at this point. It's just certain shots for a player, they calculate the situation, they go, right, unless he's, like, got god mode activated, oh. I'm probably going to get it. But he does manage to land the rail. Very, very important. The piercing sight is going to get the job done. One to one and uh, I wonder Zoo is this foreshadowing for one of the most ridiculous maps we've seen so far I mean I wouldn't want to jinx it but uh, yeah wouldn't put it past us <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all uh, but base with a beautiful frag to equalize things this guy if he's getting his rail on like Venga has been then yeah Venga needs to be scared there's three in a row right there the lead goes to base when you see a visor player get really good rails and no springs the trap Goes in for a rail, the cooldown doesn't matter because he has the wonderful angle, goes in for the starting shotgun. And that's actually a bit of a detail. He goes for the starting shotgun rather than the machine gun. Yeah, that's it's slightly unusual these days, but in the smaller maps you sometimes see it. I know that Rapper likes to do starting shotgun, particularly on Vale. But on Awoken, it's not a, not a detail that I've seen that often in recent time. But at the same time, Vase is a player that has been no stranger of using the super shotgun on some maps in ranges that maybe other players wouldn't have thought to as well. He's quite the shotgun god in that respect. Um, I think a huge part of that must just come with, hey, look, he has his angles right and he has the spread then. Happy days. Speaking of which, happy days thanks to the heavy at the same time. Needs to quickly stock up on some more rails because the rails have been doing so much work for him. Three to one so far, but with only two and a half minutes done on the clock, anything is possible at this stage. Ben Gurr going to get a mega, not before base hits a crazy good vertical rail to undo quite a lot of that effort that he went through to collect. Hits another rail. Insane. This is just insanity. This is just insane how many rails base is landing. Without piercing. The, exactly. He's been more than tremendous with that weapon. Venga intelligently spamming out the teleporter, trying to clear off some of that pressure that he's receiving. Finally, base misses a rail. I feel like he hit like eight in a row or something. There's the mega health for him, but he's going to get back to landing rails, just connecting with the wall. Venga sticks around for the reload time to get that extra DPS, but walks into him at rocket spawn. Four to one now for base. I feel like a lot of these rails coming through the way they are opens up a bit of a problematic dynamic for Vengo too, because some of these rails connecting without piercing sight might be a little bit confusing for Vengo as to when the piercing sight's available. You know, if he gets hit by a rail and he thinks maybe that was using the ability, but it wasn't, it was just a godlike shot. Ooh. What a shot, speaking of. This has been an absolute masterclass of rails so far. But Wow. Okay, Venga finds him. Base made a read that uh, he was pressuring on to get that heavy armor. Oh, sorry, to, to get the heavy position, but uh, ends up walking right into him at Mega. And go with the micro walk just to make that rocket miss. Pretty good for avoiding damage so far. Very important rail to land. Base with the rocket jump. Decides the damage taken from the rocket jump is far worth it considering staying down there would have been certain death. So Venga's got to watch out for these rails. Something he's done in the past is expose himself to angles a little bit too frequently. I don't think he's been doing that so much this time. It's more base just creating those shots himself and landing some very, very difficult rails. But we've got... the, yeah, the peak comes through, but no damage dealt just yet. Venga trying to really hold this position near heavy. No rails himself though, so being out of rail it could open up a few problems for him, especially seeing his base is kind of like commanding that area. They are going to temporarily disengage. Base hasn't got a lot of stack to work with, has to worry. No LG for Vengo either. He's pretty much, pretty much this entire life in the center of the map. He is going to finally go around and get that all-important LG. 
And now we'll see what happens. He's still out of rails. That's a very, very interesting dynamic here for base. He might be able to get some. He could have got that rail ammo crate in the lightning gun room, but Venga really likes to hold this connector position because you can hear a lot of what's going on the map. Uh, there's a lot of sort of spam areas if you're anticipating a play. And you can hear the items getting taken very importantly. There's the heavy uh, gun. Now, one of the problems Venga will face holding this set of situations. Very, very beneficial if you're the one that has the frag lead because you get to kind of bully around the map all you want. Venga currently playing from behind us, even more behind now. He's exceptionally weak. You can see base going at a thousand miles an hour. He's really looking to nail this one in. And Venga has to pull out one of those panted. Venga, please! Can Ooh. he do it? No! Misses the mid-air! That would have been a trade, and that trade would have only benefited Venga because he had such a crazy stack to work with. However, might be able to get the refrag here on base. Only a little bit of HP. Plenty of armor, though, to work with. And Venga, fresh off the spawn, no rail in sight. He should be able to hold on to this mega health, though. There's still time left for Venga to do some work to make this map a little closer. He should have got himself... I believe he got himself the railgun a moment ago. I might be wrong on that. Looking to take the rail shot, but doesn't hit its target. Venga putting on the pressure. Oh, Whoa. the flick on the SSG! The read, just knowing if he's going close range, he's very likely to jump pad. And if I hit the magical final hit there, all the damage I need. That weapon swap was perfect. However, getting a bunch of damage, if anything, if he's going to die there, SSG staying out, kind of best case scenario to maximize damage for a refrag. Unfortunately, not really possible thanks to Venga picking up the Mega, and he's in a good position. Still, plenty of time to make a comeback here, Zoo. There is certainly time, but it's also base, one of the strongest defensive players in the world. You're going to have to somehow open up the taps, force out some positional mistakes, and well, create some brand new, never before seen angles. Who better to do it than Venga looking for the spam rockets? Base with some good dodge. Venga's got to be careful on these items too. Very minimal damage on the jump pad, though, holding that angle ready to go. Keeping a huge stack, but a big stack only means so much if you can't find your opponent base looking to put up that brick wall of defense right now as less than three minutes on the clock left. And that visor piercing sight may not necessarily be used to secure frags anymore. Just gauge that information, see how well we can run away. Base is not afraid to so down low. He's just completely playing this game of left or right, right? Oh, he's actually going to chase directly. That's really brave from Venga because he left the heavy armor open the entire time. Oh, one rail. Mega Health's going to be up. He's left the heavy armor up for a long time. Finds him chasing massive. for the major item. That was absolutely massive. He has spawned near heavy, yes, but he hasn't really got a lot of weapons, and that's why Venger's looking to hold these rail angles. Really keep base on the edge of a string. He misses the third rail, misses the fourth as well. Dodge. That is going to give base a little bit of breathing space. Realistically, Venger really wanted to hit those rails in that situation. It's true. He would have pushed in harder if he had more lightning gun ammunition, but it, it was just too difficult for him to approach. But He's made it a whole bunch closer. His control is certainly not bad at all, and he's now going to start pressuring that heavy armor. He can't let this item go for free. And base knows that it's a bit of a trap, but he's going to immediately rocket jump away. And go, I think, more content allowing base to have some of these angles and maybe get some rails to whittle the stack down. But base is going to be pretty happy, I think, setting up shop again. He has been able to waste almost a minute and a half. Only conceded one frag in the meantime. That's kind of good odds if you're able to run the consistency game. Again, it's going to be about the heavy. I'm very curious what base is going to do. He has got the pissing sight up. He might even be... He just used it a moment ago. Hits one rail. The heavy will go over to Venga as now base is going to edge away. And he's not even interested in taking fights at all anymore. That rail, very, very important. Venga. Has to be kind of mindful. He's going to have to try and pick up some rail ammo here if he can. But the defensive rockets from base just looking way too good. Venger going to get some of that armor just to stack up for the next fight that's going to take place. One minute warning. Two frags deeply taken. Base putting up that brick wall once more. But no rails. The lack of rails here might be quite a problem for him. Well, see, he has got time to make a rotation on the weapons. He's right, got the we heavy, go. and this is going to be a big time. But what a play from here! Doesn't go for the heavy, catches base with his pants around his ankles. There's the heavy armor for him. Spawn's not going to be forced in that direction. He has made himself a very real opportunity to catch up. If Vengo wants to go fast, he has plenty of time to make it happen. What's the read going to be near Banana? Vengo doesn't want to play that mess around game anymore where it's left and right. Zig when you should have zag. He's going to pressure in full speed ahead. He has to find base. He has it in his sights. He's looking to make the chase. Base running for his oh. life. Hits one rail. The rocket doesn't do a lot of damage. Vengo's going to push it, but no! Oh! Shot. Does not miss the final shot at all. He needed that desperately, but he's very, very weak. 
while he still braves it out to go over towards the Mega Health. We're 10 seconds away from an overtime. Lands a rail on the heavy pickup, so base has not got any overstack anymore. Yep, the LG. LG. Lots of damage. Venger taking quite a few bits of hits himself, but base, the jump pad gets used. Okay, that's a bit of information, but was it a fake out? He's thinking about it. This is close. There's still 10 seconds until major items. My heart can't take this catch up. Anyone's game. Almost identical stack at this stage. And so likely going to trade Mega for Heavy is what I imagine is going to happen here. Piercing Sight, a long way from being ready though, so that all-important resource might not even be happening by the course of this final map. Wonderful Rail, looks for a second, doesn't quite hit the shot, but he has the stack advantage base. Has to be very careful with how he approaches here. What is the option going to be, Zoot? I think Venga wants to get make sure that he has that 100 armor. His ammo is fine. It's it's a little sketchy, but if he ha if he gets a couple of fights and no one decides to frag, he's certainly got to be cautious of that ammunition. But that's a problem to worry about a little later. Oh, he's going to find it up close. He moves away from the rockets a bit. Rail up on the bounce pad doesn't land it. Two major items are up. Ooh, no. Huge rail shot. He manages to dodge away before another rail comes in. He has got the light armor spawning in good time, but this is some big, big place from base to hold off of that pressure. That missed rail and then the returned rail from base jumping down near heavy. I mean, it made such a big difference to bring him back into this fight. Okay, I was going to talk about the ammunition for a second, but he managed to get the lightning gun. He didn't get the rail ammo crate, so I'm slightly concerned has about that. to make that. sure he hits every shot then, Zoot, I That's suppose. It. I mean, again. He's, I mean, he's been coming in with the clutch this far, and he has no choice at this moment, but to do the exact same thing all over again. An identical spawn on Mega and Heavy. They trade it out once more. Neither player wanting to take unnecessary risks. Doesn't go through the teleporter just yet. Piercing but Sight is up. I think base backed away. He might have actually used Piercing Sight just then. What a shot! Wow. How does Van Gerd just create these angles? He's found him. The rail with the light armor only behind him. Base is in a lot of trouble, but his LG is phenomenally good. But I think Venga wants to back out a bit. His health is low, and an insane rail from base could certainly have secured the map win. Yeah, near LG room, there's plenty of stuff to restock up. Actually, a little bit more to collect than base has access to. Starving him of the light armor, making this fight towards heavy much more in Venga's favor. Base misses the rail. That's really important, actually, to make sure they hit that shot. But he does go for the heavy instead. Venga, for a pure trade, has significantly more stack. But base, he's been hitting ridiculous LG all this way. Venga in and out mm. for ammo. The price to pay for a few rails? Do you think that's worth it? Venka does have another light behind him if he wants it. Base is going to know those kind of resources. It's, it's basically, they have two sides of the map. Venga's got a lot more space, it feels like, than base. What was that, a rocket jump? No, just a bit of spam. Base is, he's invoking that insane defensive playstyle. Venga knows it, and he's giving it a lot of respect. He knows he has to start connecting some of those insane, unlikely rails in order to really give himself the most realistic opportunity at winning. And he knows the most, the biggest opportunity to lose is if he overcommits to one of these fights without being god tier. And there's also an element of having to show extra respect, knowing that piercing sight, if you haven't got timing on it, could be activated at any moment which means that base is going to have more information than you will. And if he springs a single trap, then it could be all she wrote. With one frag deciding who wins this map, that's a lot of pressure. He is going to get the heavy, misses the rail though. Nothing returned, so the stack remains pretty much deadlocked at this stage. Each rail exchange or each rail landed matters so much at the moment. This is a pivotal, absolutely pivotal frag. Going into blood run for the next map, base his home turf, his territory that he's so comfortable on. If he can win this map and then go into his best map next, I would be worried if I was Venger. He needs to get this map pretty significantly. I think he might know where he is roughly. He just hears a drop. Time for a rail shot is going to land it, but that rail doesn't mean as much as the next bottle. Missed rail shot is a bad weapon to have out of your base. Rockets aren't too bad at all, but there's a massive stack for Venga. He's going to find him near the teleporter, but there's a, a jump up from base using that 25 health bubble. Base is still so weak. Venga, he knows that the light armor base is desperate for. Still 10 seconds for major items. He has a base stack back up and running, but nothing major. That rail, though, very pivotal. Venger, got to be quite careful, though, because he himself doesn't have that much better stack. Identical at this point. It is going to get undone. Heavy likely to be taken. Does base make the play? He does. He jumps down, and he hits some really good LG. The missed rail! Is that going to be punished heavily? He's oh timid for it. The oh! Jump. Oh! oh! The super shotgun coming out from base at the last second. The missed rail was punished with a map loss. And again, that deceiving shotgun at the last second. Only base does that. That was that was absolutely brutal, man. And base looks calm as a cucumber right there. 
That was that was a wild, wild ride. Wenger almost making it back, but now he knows that his back is up against the wall because he's going over to Blood Run and he has to win if he wants to deliver, get himself over to that top eight. And some of these highlights here. I mean, a <laughs> frag at the start is like, okay, yeah, we're, we're in for some, uh, we're in for a, a fun ride here. And that final frag at the last second, one of the most wild fights that we've seen this weekend so far, but it's just the level of clutch base, the right weapon for the right job. Can I just also talk about like, what base has actually just done here? This Wenger has been the most consistent player on this map. It takes an extreme level of play in order to take this map off of Wenger. And what base has just done here in this one map is, it, it's just frankly enormous. And he's setting himself up so well to get himself over to play Kilsen. And that's it. This isn't even the, the end of the journey for these players. And quite a few of these highlights actually involve SSG. And that's really, really interesting to me because it's just something that base just kind of, it's almost like that that fallback that he has, that it's something that players might temporarily forget about the use of it. You always expect a rocket at that range, but he often just goes, hey, here's a super shotgun. If I'm point blank, it truly is the highest source of damage I can output, especially knowing in that final fight how much damage base was taking. It was like, right, I could go for rockets here, or I could look at the fact that I've taken way more damage than normal, and this is the best chance to undo some of that work. Mm. But what a choice. But yeah, I, I, we really can't undersell the severity of Wenger's situation because now Ooh. he has to play Blood Run against a complete master of Blood Run. Yeah. After he's just taken your best map off of you. That is a very, very large mental hurdle. And Wenger, it's going to be quite a testament, I think, to how far he's come as a player. Definitely. If he can even the odds here. I, I, Wenger's definitely strong at Blood Run. It's just he's not base on Blood Run, right? Is he going to be able to apply some of his aggressive nature to it? I, I firmly believe it's all down to probably the first one to two frags if that second frag is taken by whoever's 1-0 up. If Wenger can get that, then I think he can hold that lead, and that's the plays that he should be trying to make. For base, it's a bit harder to hold a lead versus a ranger, just based on how much more mobility that champion has. There's but definitely a lot of morale building on this map. This map means a lot, not only for Wenger, but for this crowd. They'd love to see their hometown hero get that all-important top eight situation, making it into the quarterfinals. The rematch against Kilsen, which would be absolutely legendary. This would be without question a massive upset if Wenger doesn't crack into the later stage of this tournament. I think so. I think so. But with, with base, I feel like we, we talked about his ascension. I feel like we're seeing that next level of the ascension. You know, who knows how far he can go in the bracket. I don't think anyone probably, I don't think anyone had it on the radar for like a semi-finals yet, but we're, th this is the kind of performances that you need to bring out if you want to be getting there and beyond. They always say that at LAN, anything's possible and that's where surprises happen. Totally. That's where players have their breakout performance. You know, Base's original breakout performance was DreamHack Tour last year. And then, you know, over a year later now, this is almost like, could this be the, the, the next breakout performance to an even larger scale because of what's on the line? This would be an incredible win for base if he can pull off a 2-0 versus one of the absolute favorites to win this entire thing. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, I think he's basically made his, his like own music videos about Blood Run and things like that. I think we're talking about how sort of at home he feels here. Um, it's, it's like something like... Blood Run, Blood Run is his father or something. I think I'm getting the memes wrong. I'm sure some people in chat are correcting, me, correcting me massively. But it's just part of the sort of comic con content that Base creates. Um, I'm tr I'm laughing at the moment, but I'm also just still in recovery from the map that we've just seen, um, and I'm preparing myself for what could be another totally insane game. Could and be a definite change of pace depending on who gets the first frag. And uh, honestly, I. Somehow, I don't. I, I'm not sure it's going to happen anymore. As I said, that base is is definitely favourite, especially after winning Awoken. But I would love to see a blood a blood covenant because Anarchy and Strog, with these types of players, is is just going to be insanity. It's very mentally exhausting too, at this stage. You know, Vega, yeah. There's a lot of general concern, I think, from his demeanour. Like, you can tell that he's really trying to concentrate on this. I did have a chat with him uh, on, it was a couple of days ago, in fact, and I said, do you feel like this this home environment, do you, actually, do you feel like it makes a difference to you? Mm. And uh, his answer was actually quite interesting. He said, obviously, I would like to do well, and I want to do my hometown proud, and I want to do the people here proud. However, 
when it comes to the game itself, I'm essentially trying not to think about it because yeah. anything that resembles a distraction, anything that is beyond how he normally feels when he plays, which is when he's at his best, he's trying to kind of discard that from his mind. So when the game is live, I doubt he's thinking about where he is. I think he's ignoring the environment entirely because anything that could remove his focus will potentially make him play a way he doesn't normally play. He, yeah. Van Gerwen, I mean, this, we're talking about him so much because this is his rise to power. Oh, totally. That this time last year in Luka, this exact tournament, he fell a little bit short by compared to his own standards. However, he's been remedying that all year round. And he knows, he, he wants that big win. You know, he wants the Cinderella story. Yeah, and it's about keeping those emotions intact at the moment. Catch up, let's get ourselves into the next map. We've made it here onto Blood Run. We are on a Wenger's point of view. He has a lot of work ahead of him in order to tie this up. Can he keep his head in the game? The Whoa. surprise on base, completely taken him by surprise. There's a pretty big stack difference, but again, watch out for that super shotgun. It's been the constant thorn in his side. And there's oh. turret. Get out of there. See you later, turret. But even once more, just this... Whoa, that Whoa. rail! Very important rail to hit. Wenger has to try and fight for it a little bit while relying on just causing him to miss. In this case, he does. But he's quite weak indeed. In and out for the heavy. Cannot allow base to establish anything that resembles control this early on. Minimal damage on a rocket. I love actually jumping around the corner just in case he hit one of those prediction rockets on him. He managed to force him through the teleporter so we can see here comes some of his own armor. Base really wanted that light armor, but he's, you know what? It's not worth the risk. Let's focus on position and not get baited into these, uh, these sort of semi-traps. Go get, get, get some information there. At this point, we're just going to remove the turret. Yeah, it did take a while for the heavy to get taken. Use that as a complete trade situation. And now Van Gerr doing what he always does best. Look for those almost impossible rail angles, of which this is definitely one of them. Base knows. This is this is base just understands this map so well. And he has a read on Venger. He knows that Venger is looking to apply pressure with that weapon. So he's he's aiming for it and, and shooting before Venger has even got a chance to react. But this is the dangerous thing, is that when someone is this comfortable on a map, they they've been there, done that, worn the t-shirt. The chance of Vengar doing something that will surprise base, which is normally a great style for Vengar. We saw that in some of the frags in Awoken. These moments where base calculates, right, I'm going to go in, or I'm going to do this, and Vengar just completely goes against the grain and makes the frag happen. The chance of that on Blood Run is so much smaller because base is ready for every possible avenue. At this stage, Vengar, once more, just looking to get some information, but base has a very similar idea. It's going to be who gets that first crucial mm. shot. You know, the, the real set of actions likely to take place when one of these major items spawns. In this case, it's going to be heavy first, but it's narrowly first. Looking to try and push him off heavy at the same time. Base did some fantastic damage with the tri -bolt. And at the same time, actually fresh off the Mega, now means base is a bit more free to punish him for going towards the heavy. Ooh. Oh, I respect the attempt. That would have been such a clean in and out. He can't, he can't just go for it because he wants it. He's got to be very careful. Base already take, has taken the major item, so he can stand here all day at the moment. This is very dangerous. He's going to go up for it regardless, and Rocket jumped out. Makes it work, keeps itself around 100-100. Good execution from Wenger, but definitely a bit tense. Needs that rocket ammo. Going to pick it up nicely near power up rim. Ooh. Here's the rail, very important. Mega has been taken though, so a lot more work needs doing here. Wenger looking for the rail angles once more. Once overextended, it's, it's just base. Having this absolute foresight. And I think Base is going to be able to get himself onto the heavy armor. Venga hoping that this light it will spawn soon. And there's some data. Looks like Venga really is. If he is waiting for that light, it's been a while since it was around. Overstaying his welcome just a little bit. Base has maintained a level of control. He's just going to get the Mega. The pickups have been in his favor almost 100%. Looking for that angle. Nice little cute angle there as Base peeks himself around the corner. This He's got a lot of mileage off those tripods so far. It's a very dangerous angle, though. That's one of the most the hot choke points in the in entire map. So Venga has to approach that with respect. Tripod is usually uh, what's I providing <laughs> those deadly outcomes. I love that play. Venga remembers that he's been Ooh. looking for that angle before and got hit by in the corner by a peak. He almost peaked and then instantly went out to force the rail and then during the downtime went for a shot of his own. It'll be good for Venga to find a way to push in fairly soon before he misses an opportunity. Base is on a 100 health, 50 armor. There is a die roll that is available and he's recently got rid of a turret. He might think that it, there isn't a turret left. 
Well, base has got the cooldown available to him. And Venga's not pressing the issue. That does worry me a little bit. He needs to find some sort of damage. If base gets over to 100-100, he's actually comfortable fighting with that from a distance. Especially with the shots that he's been hitting so far. It's almost making Venga's stack nowhere near as, as impactful. The chance of him missing a shot and then Venga going in to punish. Haven't really been able to see that much, if at all so far. Venga, able to get in and out, has been able to kind of... Even without securing a frag, he's managed to force himself back into the center of this map. Gonna deal with the turret, base. Knowing it's down. Not that he really needs that information at this stage. He's so close bar. No Doubt he listened to it. And yeah, five minutes in, no frags. But this is Blood Run, you know, This is that style. Both players have to be incredibly careful because if you give base one frag on this map, it changes the dynamic intensely. Van Gerr, he's fishing for that first frag because he needs that lead. He needs that comfort zone. Because if base takes it, it becomes a totally different match. He's going to find him. Looking for a, almost a rocket. Manages to find the rail instead. Does he want to chase down for this? He knows that there's a turret nearby. I believe he's understood where it is. Base is just waiting by the teleporter. He's not going to go through as he knows that that can be a bit of a trap. I think he put the turret up on the uh, platform. There's going to be one rail moving into the go. orb. Can he finish the job? He's got to go with the LG, but it's a mutual frag in the end. Temporarily getting caught with not necessarily the right weapon cost him that trade. I feel like he definitely could have got that frag a little bit earlier, but he was just kind of caught mid-weapon swap, and that gave that one free rocket that did the damage to allow the trade to connect later. So wonderful rail. Going in towards Heavy, Venga looking to get out. Not a huge amount of damage taken over the fact that he's got plenty of armor left to go. And base without armor has to be very careful about rails, thankfully. That one's going to miss its mark. The 1-1 trade, we're kind of back to where we started. You know, both players yes. in many ways looking for the next frag because it's the lead they need. That's what happens. That's what lets Blood Run let you play a little bit differently. Venga showing so much respect. And i got to say, playing around base's style really well. Like he's 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 well aware of who he's fighting on this map. That there's maximum consideration from both of the players. Base also has a lot. Oh, he's been to the top. He tries to get out creatively, but Vanga, he's gonna get a huge frag there, and he's found base once more. He wants to chase this again even more with the bubble, but it's gonna be nothing. Three-one to Vanga. The dire orb allowing the chase to be much more efficient than it otherwise would be. Base understanding. Hey, look, if I'm probably gonna die here, the gauntlet. That was no troll. That was I need to get the most damage I can. It wasn't a super Whoa. shotgun fresh off the spawn. Looking for a rail, misses the shot, but again. Base, barely any armor. That tribolt ain't gonna tickle. And now Venga in a great position to chase this one down. And the all important control and the lead he's been looking for for seven minutes is finally his. Yeah, but now, if, if he knows base is as weak as he is, then sure, go for a kill. But if base starts getting to 100 100, then it's far more about okay, can I slow the game down? Can I get to that 10 minute mark? Can I get myself to Blood Covenant? But with this tickling damage, he knows that base cannot commit to a fight at all. And it's good. It, it might look like just 20, 30, 40 damage at a time, but it's enough. Oh, the little... What a misdirection. Cute. Catch up. That was some cute business right there. That was... Hey, look over there. Yoink. Hits and the rail through the rocket smoke as well. Timing. It's just almost all muscle memory at this stage. But it's now base is the player that's behind. You know, now Wenger is the one that's able to establish himself in the center of the map, listen out for any information he has. And he has that breathing space, that leeway. If he can tease one frag, he kind of has more to work with. Two minutes on the clock. It's when you play for that one frag at the start and it's as slow as it was, you do in turn give yourself less time to come back if you finally get a frag. In this case, Wenger was able to secure off a very, very bold play. And just look at the consequences. He does know now that two major items have gone to base. And he's got to keep on playing defensively. What angles he's going to choose to use. Base looking for a spam shot, not going to land anything. And Venga's going to slow down again. Has that teleporter to play with. As what's important for Venga is he doesn't rush anything. And for base, I mean, his objectives are so difficult. You know that your opponent's got a dire orb. There's multiple escapes. You know, he can strafe just as fast as you can. There's a good start for base. And he's even going to orb right through. Doesn't want to risk getting hit by splash rocket or pre-fire rail. There's also no way base doesn't understand exactly why he's been free to run around the center of the map and collect those items. He knows now Venger is playing pure runaway, pure defense. Yeah. You know, if you want to go into the center to take those items, you put yourself in harm's way. Venger has no reason to put himself in harm's way. Less than one minute left of the clock. That rocket was so crispy. And at this stage, looking good for Venger. Just needs to stay alive, keep his stack as high as possible, and just play this runaway game. He's going to get another dire orb, likely to be the last dire orb we're probably going to see in this map when it finally 
appears and Vase has a lot of work to do. At this stage, he's running out of time. He's going in for the chase, but not without those spam rockets. Looking so good. There is a chance to maybe get a frag here, but if he concedes this frag, oh. it's going to be over. And Venger, the fact he survived is a win in itself. He wasted time and now he can disengage. Yeah, and I'm very glad he didn't commit to the fight, even though he knew that he got, got base incredibly low. He's just running. He's playing the lead. Doesn't want any respawn craziness to affect him. Now playing the numbers, he is totally safe. Wenger has done almost the unthinkable on Blood Run what and is this? somehow got us to a tiebreaker. So what is this timeline where Base beats Wenger on Awoken yeah. and Wenger beats Base on Blood Run? It's just, it's just crazy. Both these guys are playing at an insane level, but you've got to think back to the one defining moment of this map is when Base got caught going to the heavy armor and just got lifted. And that's something very rare for him to get trapped from. He had a read on Wenger, but this tiny little like an off read, just off calculation, and it's not going to work. That frag that we just saw a moment ago. Very much wrong place, wrong time. Put himself far too up. And then from that moment, actually, we got some refrags in that situation, purely because the stack was there, fresh off the spawn, yeah. just peppered it down. But wow, what a crazy blood run that was. But that was just map two. We, we're now on the decider. Blood <laughs> Covenant. We get the high movement we were looking for. We get the, oh my word. Uh, yeah, 62% rail he had, 46% lightning gun. That's that's outrageous. I'm I, kind I, of just absorbing how ridiculous this scenario so is. It wasn't like a high fragging game, so I doubt the damages from the two players were more than, I'd be surprised if it was more than two and a half thousand or so each, but maybe 3,000. Um, but that, that's still crazy because there was a lot of tribot going on. There's a lot of nails. There was a lot of different weapons being, as I say, peppered about. But and there was just a very patient man's game taking place for yeah. the first five minutes. You know, both players were looking. They had a very similar style. Like, Van Gerwen was aware that base ultimately he kind of looks for that frag, and almost in some ways, Van Gerwen did the exact same thing in return. It's just that Ranger allows you to be naturally a little bit more aggressive. Mm. Like you know, th when you have the the lead and you can put those turrets down and you can get the extra information and the damage and the blocking, it works wonderful if you have the lead. But then if you look at Ranger, the fact that he can use that dire orb to go immediately down and the chase that took place near teleporter purely because base after losing the first frag, the dire orb chased the teleporter. There's no way he could survive because he physically he couldn't run away in time. Mm. That champion difference really started to add up because Vengo was the one that got the first yeah. frag, and then Ison's defensive use of the turret stopped having as much use once base didn't have the lead. Exactly. Now, this is going to change entirely going so into Blood Covenant. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to start getting us over to Blood Covenant. It, it, we're about to jump into the map straight away. My main point of analysis really is Anarchy has to watch out for the rails a lot. It's a weak champion, cannot get caught out. Uh, and as for Strog, I'm, I mean, I'm learning what base is going to be able to give us. Haven't really seen base use this champion heaps and bounds. So there is going to be quite a lot of early information to absorb from this. Finger, one of his early objectives might be securing that rail if possible. But just thanks to spawns, he's not really on the rail side. So it's quite tricky for him to get in without base, who actually heads him off, misses the rail. Venger looking to get a small punish, but once more without armor, it's going to be quite risky. So he needs to prioritize his stack first, go in later. Base has been hitting some phenomenal rails throughout the entire course of this series, and you have to show that aim respect. And, and something that's sometimes not at the back of players' minds is when you overcommit to a fight, that Pika you have to watch out for. Oh, yeah. Suddenly it can be present, and its burst damage can be pretty damn powerful. Heavy was taken a second ago. Mega in just in time as he was briefly railable. And this light should also be up very shortly. The time should be right. And then uh, dropping down using the pillar as cover. All the small little details that some people might miss, you know. But just going down the pillar to deny the angle. Get in and out nice and safe. So now Venga uh, hanging out near the catacombs because you know, these small armors are kind of all he's had access to so far. The entire left side of Blood Covenant has in some ways been completely denied. You know, base just hitting those angles and controlling the high ground. One of the benefits a champion like Strog will have, you know, being able to use the crouch slide jumps to kind of really go wherever he wants to go. And once more, it's kind of shades of Blood Run. Mm. Ben Gurr is just looking for that one moment. But unlike Blood Run, he kind of needs a rail to get started. Yeah, yeah and that's what he's going to be trying to work his way towards. It's getting that upper position. He knows that base has had it for a long time. Now he's back up there. He hasn't taken any extra damage. And he should be about to get that rail gun. Almost two minutes in, it feels like a lot, but he's just doing it that way because it's a safer way to do it. You can't afford, as an anarchy, to receive damage when you're picking up a weapon as crucial as a railgun. Both players are going to miss that rail shot. Hard to say he's going to come off better in that exchange, but I know base is going to be a lot more brave to just go in and take the mega. He's going to be in and out, and here comes the decision-making from the heavy side. 
Venga really needs to hit some of those rails first. Thankfully, he's able to look for those peaking angles because he's saving the injection for when that happens. You know, that's actually what I've really enjoyed about watching the use of the injection so far. Oh. Hits two rails in a row, and now the time to go in has reared its ugly head. Can he hit the shot? This would be If he goes that way, that would have been ridiculous, but base. I'm very surprised almost that Venga didn't chase uh, entirely to get the full punish in, but again, it's that respect coming out, so definitely makes sense. We've got heavy up soon. Once Venga takes this, this is really dangerous. I think he just spotted him. Whoa. Base is going to have to get out, surely. He just snags away that light armor, but it's not much to work with. He'll probably get himself 100-100, but we have got an absolutely tanked Venga. That's one defensive rocket, and I think that's been enough to actually send him back. Oh, no. Whoa. That one hurt. And he's actually, yeah, he was just barely rayable thanks to the blood pool has undone it a little bit. But you can really tell that, no, no the reason Venger probably didn't go in is entirely because he wanted to establish a control on base. You know, once he got that heavy and he was in a position to chase it down, base was too weak to really challenge and fight for it, allowing Venger to finally establish heavy control, something he didn't have for three minutes. But base hitting that wonderful rocket. Whoa. Missed rail, that's important. And uh-oh. Ben Gur getting clipped without returning the favor. And he's straight back to square one. Only this time, base is going to head him off. Super Shotgun's not going to be as effective versus Light Champions. All about the spread wow. when it comes to that weapon. How did Venga negotiate that amount of damage? That's unbelievable. Mega Health gets taken, but stacks aren't too indifferent. Now we've got the heavy armor up. But we are starting to see a little bit of change of pace. You know, base is looking to sort of break that cycle that Venger had established, where it's you control high ground and take Mega and stuff. I'll sit in the catacombs and just you know stack myself back up and look for that one moment. Base looked to kind of really put a spanner in the works there and jump down near light and head him off. His read was successful, but Venger's damage output was so crazy. Base didn't really get anything off it, and even then he heard the jump pad. But I think he's just a bit doesn't want to get hit by that rail angle because the moment that rail connects, he's not in an amazing position. He's going to hit one shot. How is Venger going to make the chase, if at all possible? That was huge, actually, because it was right after Mega Health was taken, so there's barely any overstack for base to work with. Ooh. Another rail, got to watch out for the heavy machine gun still. The heavy plus injection. We might start to get a chase soon here. There's the speed injection plus the health. Going to find base, want to chase. Finds the rail, there is the first blood. Very important frag for Venger, now establishing a lead. And the fact that he's just got him fresh off the spawn. If he just hung around like that split second longer, he would have actually had that information that base spawned down there near LG. Might have been able to put some of that pressure on. But at the very least, he's able to sit near and just establish this control. And, he, and it was just picking that magic moment and not being way too aggressive. Something that we historically have kind of seen from Anarchy in the past, just running in, using that speed to get in and try and do damage. But I feel like base, has to watch out for it. He's going to swap to the SSG again. Can he get the rail? Oh, he oh, can, oh. base. No escape for you. Five minute warning has taken place with two to zero for Wenger. And he's in a wonderful position at this stage. And he needs to keep the cycle rolling. He's playing it very safe as well. He's he's not actively pursuing base, but if he happens to run to him on a sort of route, then he's taking care of business. He's trying to really focus on the items. Now he's got to be careful because he's received two rails. He managed to get one at the end. That's an essential part of the fight for him to retain that control. And now that comes down, base looking to head him off, misses the rail again. A bit of a funny angle though, so no wonder it didn't connect. Only two more rails for Venger. So he's actually trying to save on the ammo a little bit and then pepper oh. down. No armor versus heavy machine gun. They're not the best of friends. And base pretty weak. Forced to retreat a small bubble. That rail so important for keeping base alive. If Venger managed Absolutely. to at least trade that, perhaps things would have been different. But he's mindful about his lack of rail ammunition. And Base has just got himself the heavy armor, so he's <clears throat> back in the game a little bit. If he can push Venga out of control, I think that Venga might be in a bit of trouble. Anarchy is so weak when you're not able to get on two major items, and Base can easily make it so that you're not even able to get onto the light armors. But now we can see once more Venga really setting up shop down here. And take one of those lights to put himself back up. Plenty of health, thanks to the Mega. Heavy is about to spawn, and Wenger, he's so content at this point, just giving it to base. Mm. I really think he's comfortable actually playing on the two frag lead and kind of just keeping it there. He hasn't even been interested in getting some more rail ammunition. You know, right now I think he's content that he could get the job done where he is. Base is going to go all guns blazing with the super shotgun. Takes way too much rocket damage for him to be comfortable with. Forced to retreat. And that's a. Oh my word, the kamikaze! He does get a lot of mega health in time, though. 
Base wasn't in a position to punish after that peak of damage, so Venga isn't looking too bad. He'll have the light armor, he can work with this, but he has to have a, a clue of what kind of stack base has. And at this point, saving the injection. So I want to talk about something, though, because the way that Venga's been playing, especially for the last two to three minutes, is incredibly defensively. I think he's trying to do that sort of plus back game away from uh, base and using sort of his mobility to his advantage. I mean, you very rarely see a player spend this much time down the bottom of the map on Blood, mm. Blood Covenant. I think this is normally a map that's a little bit more, I guess, up top. Rails playing a huge part. The attack coming in, saving the injection for the last minute, hitting a wonderful rocket. Hitting oh! two, hitting three. Venga hits a very important combo there, taking base zero to three. And now the pressure just became so much more amplified. And base actually buying into that uh, position as well. Normally, base is very respectful of defensive plays, but it was like Venga was playing base at his own game. Base sitting there right now thinking, oh, that's what this feels like. But I think I mean, it really is just Venga. He's, he's hiding in some very unorthodox locations. Yes. Too. And it's just wasting time, right? Almost in some ways causes base to do an entire cycle of the map before he tries again somewhere else. This game of hide and seek right now, Venga, the world heavyweight champion of hide and seek, apparently, as base. I mean, he's getting all these items, but what does it mean if he can't even find Venga? And when he finally does, Venga just casually hitting these crazy shots and these ridiculous combos, your stack may as well not matter. I'm not really satisfied with Venga in this position until he gets to about 9.30. I think that's when he can start feeling a lot safer. But Anarchy, he can get farmed off spawn. Base has got great control. We need to see what he's able to do in this last minute and 10 seconds. He has an idea where he is. He has got some speed, but again, those defensive rockets, how much are they going to destroy his momentum? He's trying to find a way in closer. Injection now used, so Venga's got some good movement. And buck up the LG stairs. This is a good push from base, but look how weak he is. Venga's defensive positions right now are absolutely spectacular. Not only is he picking these very strange locations, they're locations where it's kind of a 50-50 which direction he's going to go. And it's forcing base to kind of have to dedicate to one or the other. He got one good read near the blood pool where he jumped down and hit SSG. But other than that, Van Gera has kind of just been running rings around him. And when the time finally comes to chase, that at that point, it's just so funneled in that those defensive rockets really matter because you can't really dodge them in a hallway this small. And he's just saying up shop again. That one staircase is an absolute worst enemy if you're base right now. Because even if he thinks he's here again, what do you do? Do you chase and then give up rocket angles? Do you try and go up top when he can simply jump down? Like, what a horrible situation to be in. Base is like, oh, you're there again. We got 10 seconds to go. This is going to be the victory lap for Venga in a second. 4-0 on Blood Covenant. Venga goes to top eight. What a crazy series this was, Zoot. Unreal. Absolutely. A lot of respect coming out. Base. They used um, to be teammates, of course. So you, you know there's respect there, 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 